Hello everyone, I'm uh, Giuseppe Manella, gastroenterologist and uh, pancatorbidal endoscopist at the uh, San Rafael uh, Institute of Milan, Italy. And it's a pleasure for me to be here with a colleague and a friend of mine, Dr. Coluccio. So Chiara, please. Hello, I'm Chiara Coluccio, gastroenterologist and pancreatobiliary endoscopist at Forli Cesena Hospitals in Italy. And first of all, we would like to thank Gastrointestinal Endoscopy for giving us the opportunity to share the results of our latest meta-analysis on fully versus partially covered self-expandable metal stands for palliation of distal malignant biliary obstruction. So let's talk about it. Giuseppe, why did you feel the need to deepen this topic? Thank you, Chiara. Um... We all agree that uh, uh, this palliation is a crucial step for the management of uh, digestive neoplasm, not only for symptom simulation, but also to allow prompt oncological treatments for these patients. ESP uh, still represents a gold standard for uh, biliary drainage in distal malignant biliary obstruction. And while we have uh, solid evidence uh, that plastic stenting is associated with worse outcomes in terms of uh, cholangitis, uh, shorter patency, higher need of brain interventions, there is not universal agreement on which type of self-expandable metal stents we should offer to our patients. Yes, that's true. Some initial data started to suggest that covered versus uncovered stents increase time to recurrent biliary obstruction. But actually, we don't have any evidence regarding a direct comparison between fully versus partially covered design, which are usually mixed together throughout studies. Probably what happens in real life is that each center is inclined to use one design over another, mostly guided by a personal experience or preference. For example, in my hospital, we are mostly used to fully covered stands because they nullify the risk of ingrowth, whereas they are easily removable in case of intervention. However, they are more prone to migration and might theoretically increase the risk of cholecystitis and pancreatitis, despite this has never been proved. Yeah, that's true. And conversely, in my center, we have historically preferred partially covered SAMs. Theoretically speaking, the presence of these short uncovered terminal portions uh, might increase adhesion to the biliary wall, reducing the risk of migration, which is the most common and desired event of uh, fully covered SAMs. Uh, moreover, this might theoretically result in a reduced conflict with the cystic or pancreatic duct, reducing the risk of cholecystitis and pancreatitis. However, this might come at the price of an increased risk of neoplastic ingrowth through the meshes. However, all this reasoning behind stand choice is not supported by uh, high quality evidence and since no head to head comparison exists on these two designs. And that's the reason why we decided to perform a systematic review and meta-analysis on this topic. So we included all studies describing distal malignant biliary obstruction treated by ERCP with placement of a transpapillary surface bondable metal stand. And we finally included only those studies reported on clearly identifiable codes treated exclusively by either fully covered surface bondable metal stand or partially covered surface bondable metal stand and reporting outcomes separately for these two populations, specifically focusing on adverse events and a risk of recurrence with recurrence biliary obstruction as the primary outcome. Roba, uh, several sensitivity analyses were a priori planned to consider only prospective studies uh, uh, or studies including only patients with unresectable cancer, uh, patients with pancreatic cancers only, uh, or patients receiving warfare stents only. So talking about the results, from more than 1,300 screened articles up to January 2023, we eventually included 62 articles describing more than 3,000 fully covered stents and more than 2,000 partially covered stents. What we found is that, in contrast to our general perception, there was not any detectable difference in the rate of uh, adverse events between the two SAMS design, including the rate of post-ERCP pancreatitis, bleeding, and cholecystitis. Moreover, there was not a significant difference in total rate of RBO, as a slightly higher risk of ingrow of partially covered SAMS was compensated by a slightly higher risk of migration of fully covered SAMS. However, we found that there was a significant difference in time to RBO, which was longer for partially covered stents versus fully covered ones, 369 versus 238 days. 
These results were also confirmed in all sub-analyses, especially in the one which we consider to be the most important sub-analysis, that is the one restricted to prospective studies and including only unresectable cancer, which is the setting in which the long-term patency can be better evaluated. So, Giuseppe, what do these data add in light of literature available now? So what Chiara has already said, uh, we have learned to use uh, self-expandable metal stem in this marine and pure structure, but there was scarcity of data and no society recommendation to favor one design or another. So while initial data have shown a longer time to record in linear structure for covered versus uncovered stems, this is the first meta analysis with the aim of separately assessing safety outcomes of patients treated exclusively by either fully covered or partially covered SEMs. Because as you say in literature, these two designs are often mixed together in the group covered in older studies. Uh, despite considerable heterogeneity, our findings suggest that the total rate of recurrent biliary destruction and adverse events is similar to the two designs of stems, making them uh, substantially equivalent. However, partially covered SEMs seems to be associated with a significantly longer patency than fully covered SEMs, probably due to the fact that migration events happen earlier than occlusion events in the partially covered SEMs. Yes, that's why we believe that a partially covered SEMs should be favored whenever malignancy is confirmed in order to achieve the longest possible patency or whenever the uncovered portion can help to avoid occluding the biliary carpool or the cystic duct. Why the easier removability of fully covered stems should be preferred when histological confirmation of malignancy is still pending. Routinary use of rows in this setting might also have an influence, and this is another difference between our sensors. Moreover, our study suggests that most differences in sense performances are not visible when evaluated in terms of total rate of events, but might be visible when considering time to events. And this might endorse the use of time to recurrent biliary obstruction as the primary outcome for future randomized trials on this topic. This is also clinically relevant because it consists of the time that patients can receive oncological care without needing a brain intervention. So, we hope you might find our paper interesting and useful for your clinical practice. And we would like also to thank all our core to support the efforts. Thank you.